Alright jylle, um, ons gaan nou begin met Fila, die bedrijf 2 en bedrijf 3. Ek begin nou maar net eers hierby bedrijf 1, dat ek net de recap doen met jylle, dat jylle net kan onthou waar we gaan alles weer, en dan gaan ons oorgaan na bedrijf 2 toe. Um, jylle het hierdie, so ek gaan het in hierdie bladsy volg orde doen, soos wat het hier is. So hierdie is nou bladsy um, 42 tot 44, so ons gaan net vinnig bespreek weer wat hier gebeur het, en dan gaan ons aangaan na die rest. Ek wil probeer om hierdie in een video te doen, en dan sal ons um, aangaan met Vila. Ek gaan nie die Engels verduidelik nie, jylle het dit, dit is baie makkelijk om te verstaan. So ons gaan net vinnig gaan alles, en dan kan ons weer verder gaan. Goed, dan gaan het biggie groter maak, dat ons mooier kan sien. Alright, so toneel 1, um, is dan nou die Wout toneel, so it's in the forest, ons is by die boshuis, en dis waar ons die Van Rooyens ontmoet, this is where we meet the Van Rooyen family, remember the Van Rooyen family consists of Elias, who is the father, Barta, who is the mother, and then we have four children, ons het vir Christoffel, ons het vir Willem, ons het vir Lucas, en ons het vir Nina, ok, um, this entire scene is about Lucas, ok, Lucas is um, the youngest of the sons, obviously Nina is younger than him, uh, but we get an idea of what this family is about, ok, so Elias talks about his life philosophy, um, about a person, or he believes in a bit of luck and a good plan, even though luck is scarce in the forest. We know that he still thinks his wife is beautiful, although she needs shoes, which tells us that they are poor. Um, we know, of course, Barta um, is a very weak character, uh, but we'll see about that a little later. And Elias is a character that really can't be trusted. Now he is um, oneerlijk, um, onbetrouwbaar. He doesn't look after his family well, thinking about uh, die sinkplate wat hy moet kry, uh, when the kinders hoes and his ou sinkplate wat hy moet kry nie, is nieuwe sinkplate of enig iets is dit nie. So we know he's not a very good father. Um, in this part, we, we see Barta is onrustig, want sy soek na Lucas, she's looking for Lucas, and we don't know where he is. So Willem, one of the um, children, goes and looks at a bunch of different people's houses. Um, Barta did the same thing, but we don't know. Um, we know from this part here, Elias says, a man sikkel tot sy kinders die daar groot genoeg is om te kan help, maar ek sal nog lang moet sikkel. We hear from here how old the children is. So the eldest is Willem, hy says, Christoffel is five, Lucas is three, and Nina nog aan die tiet, meaning she's still a baby, probably about one year, maybe less than that. Barta then comes as a gedaante uit die mis aan, remember we spoke about the um, curse of writing, to kneel on basins tells us what the characters are doing, how they are doing certain things, and so on. So by saying Barta comes as a gedaante uit die mis, it kind of predicts what is going to happen, uh, it creates an ominous feeling because if you look at the translation of a gedaante, it's like a skeleton or like a, a ghostly figure. Okay, so she comes through the mist like a ghostly figure, which tells us something bad is going to happen here. Okay, um, we can see from ba Elias's answers every time that Barta talks to him that he is not happy, ne? I mean, she says, Elias, and then he's like, what is that now, Weerfrau? So what is it now, woman? Can't you see that I'm busy? Can you not see that I'm busy? So we know he's not busy. He's really just sitting there doing nothing. But every time that his wife wants to talk to him about something, there's issues, okay? Um, we see this character, Tant Mali, who further ruins this whole situation because everybody's worried about the kid and then she goes on about her aunt in Karatara's forest who also had the same issue with a child that got lost and they found the, the dead body or the, the frozen body of the child 
a few days later. So Barta freaks out. She puts her fists in her mouth and bites on her knuckles. And we see everything is, is, is quite bad at this stage because they haven't found um, Lucas yet. Okay. Then page 44 to 46. Just making it bigger again. Um, Elias now blames Barta. She he says, I, I can't understand how you can let the child out of your sight, Barta. And Barta says, I was struggling with the fire. And then Tantcharki comes. Tantcharki kind of has some knowledge here. And she says, you know what? We need to get the men to go and look for Lucas before it's too late. She uses a simile to describe children. So they say, uh, a kind Elias is nes a skullbot. So a child is just like a tortoise. You think it's slow and then it's gone. Um, the men then arrive and they talk again, asking the children, where did you last see Lucas? Where did you last see Lucas? They explain that. Tant Mali again carrying on and says, Ah, oh, only God will know where a child of this age will find himself in this massive forest. Uh, Tant Mali carries on talking about Flip Lawrence who disappeared and they haven't found him yet. Uh, Elias is sure that it wasn't that he got lost, but that he was stepped on by the Grootfoote. You know, Grootfoote are elephants. Tant Mali then makes it worse. By saying the elephants have been in the area the whole week and they won't even feel if they step on a child. We spoke about Elias that said It's to convince himself. Ne? My child is still alive. This isn't what happened. He's still okay. Um, then they go out into the forest. I'm not going to explain the whole situation on how they um, searched for him or all of those things. That's really not important. But they went out and tried to find him. Then you see uh, sometimes we have the stem or bunt. Or you'll see in the later chapters or scenes rather. That uh, after a character speaks it will say or bunt. Which means the character on stage is not physically speaking. But we can hear their voices. Which is kind of like their thoughts and all of those things. Now, we spoke about tijd in tijdsverloop in vertaalde tijd in vertaaltijd and all of those things in class. So, to speed up the process instead of having six or seven months go by in which nothing really happens uh, that adds to the story, they add the stem of band to speed up the process. Okay, so it's almost like a, a narrator explaining to us. In this time gap, this is what happened. Okay, so the stem of band said on the eighth day is Lucas steeds nie gevind nie. So he's still not found after eight days. Then the constable comes in. So we know eight days since they last started searching for Lucas has passed. The constable now says we have to um, accept the fact that by this time the child is dead. In other words, we're going to stop looking for him because we're just looking for a dead body now and we might not even find that. Remember, we spoke about that in class. The story plays off around about the 1860s, there's about. So in that time, there were still a lot of leopards, probably lions, we don't know, but leopards definitely um, was there in the forest. There were baboons. There were elephants, there were all sorts of animals that could attack and kill a young child. Okay, So they might be looking for just the remains, maybe not even a full body, maybe just a half-eaten body or something like that. So they're not going to carry on looking for the child. Then we see how this affected Barta and Elias in this part. It says, Barta staan gestit. This is Sophie in Mali, so she's being held up. So is for older, for sla in an land for clear. So she looks older, she looks defeated, she is covered in or she's dressed in lanfer, which is a morning dress, dress or a, dr a clothes that you wear while you are mourning. Elias just shakes his head from side to side, meaning he cannot believe what is happening. Okay. Then the voice on tape comes in again at the end of the scene and says, Seven months later, in August of 1865, the big rains came and shortly thereafter, 
the Borswachter came to say that small parts of a or part of a smallish child's skeleton was found next to the Khonarafi between the debris. And then he ends off by saying it could also be that of a baboon. So this is two things. First thing, it gives us some form of closure. We know that the child is dead. We are sorrowful because shame, these people have lost their child. It is terrible. But then the writer goes and he adds the next part that says it could also be that of a baboon, which immediately gives us the sense of hope because, hey, maybe there is hope. Maybe Lucas will still be found. And this is very important, especially when we then go over to Act 2. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry, not Act 2, Scene 2, to Neil Tweer. Because now we are in front of Fila's house in the Lange Kloof, and you all know about Benjamin, her adopted child. So when the census mana arrives and says now, hey, but what about this child? Where did you find this child? Immediately they think back to uh, Lucas that got lost in the forest, and they immediately think, but hey, they said there that it could also have been the remains of a baboon. So because it's now possibly the remains of a baboon, we can make the connection that Lucas and Benjamin are actually the same child. Whether or not that is, we will see in Act 3, but at this point, that, that's what we know. Okay, so Act um, 1, Scene 2, Bedrijf 1, Tuneel 2, is then where we meet the Kumuti family. Okay, so both of these acts, uh, both, of, both of these scenes, Tuneel 1 and Tuneel 2, forms part of what we call the Expositie Gedeelte, because this is where we meet our characters. But in this specific one, um, scene, we also have our Mutorise Moment, the motoric moment, which puts everything into motion, okay, where the conflict starts, which is when the census mana arrives, okay. So I'm not going to go through all of these things, we have discussed it in class, very importantly, Fila's story about how things are in the Lange Kloof, um, and you'll see throughout, she talks about God, which gives us the idea that she's a very religious, very um, Christian woman, and that obviously becomes important later on in the story as well. So she explains to us how it is in the far, uh, in the in the Lange Kloof, the Karua, where it's dry, and all of those things. Um, throughout the scene, we see the fact the where Fila speaks about the parakar, uh, not Fila. Um, so Lin talks about the parakar and all of those things, um, which is again kind of ominous. It bring it starts to build, build the tension. Who is in the parakar? Where are they coming from? What is their purpose there? Who are they? Um, all of those things. What will happen once they arrive? So all of these things are, are quite important. I just want to see, I think I skipped, yeah. Um, at this part here where Fila speaks to the, the hawk, okay? This is kind of a prediction of what will happen. Uh, we've already read up to the end of Act uh, 1, Scene 4, Bedrijf 1, Tuneel 4, where Benjamin, um, where Benjamin weggevat word, of weggevat gaan word, the recensus manna on the one set geind of while Fila bezig was om te bad and om recht te maak and to say, weet you what, moet nie worry nie, alles gaan ok wees, ma sê so, ma dink aan jou, ma help jou. So, this is kind of a prediction of what will happen. Because if we read there, she says, my foodiese valk, gister my mooiste kyk in gevang, toe ek my rug draai ne. So, basically, the mooiste kyk in, the most beautiful chick, is a representative of Benjamin. Any falk can be a representative of either the census manner or the law as such because they represent the law. Okay, so the law is going to come and take her most beautiful chick, Benjamin, away from her. So it's kind of a prediction of what is to happen. Okay, so we see all of these things are happening. Fila bought a new ostrich female for Skopper, the male ostrich that she already has. And we just see the dynamics of the children here. Okay? 
Um, then again, we start off with Fila again saying they can come. The Parakar, um, was where the Parakar still on the Achtergrund. So she is now, the Parakar is there. And then Fila changes tact. Immediately she changes from Halakan Markom to end it. So she's very certain here, very certain everything is okay, everything is going well. And then, and this, so she becomes uncertain. She did not expect that which gets out of the parakar. Then, um, Salung says they're probably preachers. Again, ironic, because we expect preachers to bring good news. But the census people are actually bringing bad news. Now they're going to take Benjamin away. Um, then they greet each other. We spoke about the dynamics here, about why are they greeting each other like this? Is it right for them to greet Phila just like that without telling her who they are? Because remember, throughout the story, we only know them as Lange and Dukka. We never know their names because they never told us their names. Um, we see Phila, even though she is worried, she doesn't stand back because the moment that he asks, can we get something to sit on? She's like, what is your business here? So she's not going to say, okay, yeah, it's fine. I'll go get you chairs or whatever. She wants to know, what is your business here? So we know she's, she's a strong uh, woman. She doesn't stand back for a fight. She goes for it. Okay. So they're going to do census and all of the um, characters get explained here. All the children, remember, Phila, um, has five children in total if we count Benjamin as well. So it is then uh, Kitty, Tolly, Emma, David and Benjamin. Okay, they're probably not in the right order. I can't remember. I think Tolly, no, Kitty is the eldest, then David and then it is uh, Tolly and Emma. Okay, so all of these characters are then mentioned here, plus their birth dates, and everything is explained. Phila, Mark of Sadi Bible at least when she reads Benjamin's birth date. Why? Because she doesn't know, because he is her adopted child. Then comes the Muturis moment when Benjamin arrives on scene. Okay? So um, we will see here the Lange is geskok. He's shocked because. What's happening here? This is now a white child and he's calling you mother. And all of this explains the, the whole situation. How Fila found Benjamin outside her door one night. How she tried to take him to the felt coordinate, but the felt coordinate wasn't there. And how she uh, then eventually decided, well, you know what? Seeing as all of this is happening, I will keep the child. Okay? So all of these things happen here. They say that he's older than nine years. And Phila says she uh, she knows he is older than nine years because he's been there with her for nine years. But she, or she thought he must have been about three by the time he arrived there, which is kind of suspicious. If you think about uh, when we, we started, we said Lucas was three years old in Act 1, Scene 1. And now we're saying the child that um, Phila found was about three years as well. Okay, so there is already something going on here. Um, it carries on all of the things here up to where the fat one finally starts to put two and two together, talking about the child who got lost in Kumsa Bos, and he remembers that they went there to go and find the child, but they couldn't find the child. But Phila already says, wait a minute here, you are trying to tell me that a child of three years old will make it all the way from the other side of the forest, all the way here, over the mountains and all of those things, and still be alive. Then she says there, Basis ni rach ni kop ni. Earlier on, um, she tells uh, the, the census manna, Jy probeer nou vis vang in emmer, which basically says you're trying to put something together here that is completely impossible. So we can see Fila is a smart woman. She has logic. She understands the way of life. 
and the census mana are really just trying to put something together so that they have right to take Benjamin away. Okay, Fila explains to them why all of their stories on what can happen is not true, uh, but they carry on. Okay, um, the Dicker wants to take Benjamin away at that point, and Fila says. If you want to do that, you'll have to kill me first because he is my child. Everyone knows that and everyone keeps their hands off him. And now you want to come and take him even after you have written his name in the book as Benjamin Komuti. Um, the fat one and the tall one, they leave after they said that... Um, after they said that uh, um, they will go speak to the magistrate about this. And then we see again by Phila speaking on tape um, a change in seasons basically a few months have gone by they arrived in February and then it became March April probably May because it says for winter just before winter okay so uh, at least four months have passed when we see them again all right She's sure by now that they will not um, come back. They explain all sorts of things, what they're going to do. Phila explains that the ostriches need to start breeding because they need to get money so that they can buy more land and all of those things. So we see Phila is hardworking. She has a mind for business. She knows what she wants to do. She wants to um, make her family secure, well off, that they can have a future then benjamin comes in screaming ma 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 and poor old fila must have had a heart attack because she's worried the whole time we see in this part that as the children are going to take scopper and polly to the felt um, she never mentions when benjamin has to go which tells us that she's worried a that the census mana will return and b if they return and find benjamin alone in the field they might take him without telling her and she does not want that okay then we find out that the screaming was just because of the female that is now finally ready to mate and and when they become ready to mate we spoke about that the dancing of the ostriches so everybody's super happy because things are going well now all right then we go to Tenil Dri scene three we are back in the forest okay this probably happened during the four months that um fila and them were happy on their farm thinking the census money won't come back we first meet barta and her family again after elias had to run away from the elephants okay remember part of elias's um, strategy for getting rich quick is to kill elephants and sell their tusks but he doesn't have a gun so he needs to make a different plan okay so he explains to us here that he chopped a tree in such a way that if the elephants pressed up against it the tree would break and they the elephant would then fall down a cliff and he would be able to get their tusks all right um but something did not go right and the next day as he was going home he bumped into the elephants and they started chasing him. So he had to throw down everything. And here is the first time that we see Nina speaking. Remember, it is about nine years from when Lucas got lost. So Nina should be about nine years old by now. But here we see how different Nina is from her family. Because Nina comes in and is complaining about them making such a noise because there's a beautiful owl on the um the roof outside the house and it's going hoot 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 and she doesn't want it to fly away but barta is nervous and says go chase it away it brings bad luck so nina is a very much shall i say fairy child eh? she sees the beauty of the forest Whereas Elias, Barta and the rest only see the trouble and the difficulties that one experiences in the forest. Um, the whole issue about the owls, we spoke about that, superstitions, which means Barta is a superstitious person, as most people were in that time. 
Then the lights go out, it's, the lights come up again, and there's a Boswachter, okay? um, one of the forest guards, and he is looking for Elias. Elias immediately back paddles and no, you've come to the wrong house to come and try and find difficult or troubled because I am a, a, a broken man. Those elephants chased me for nothing. He's immediately panicked that the Boswachter is there to take him into custody because he has no permit to hunt elephants. Okay? But when the Boswachter finally starts speaking, he says, Magistrate sent me because there is a possibility that your child, the one that got lost, has been found alive. And every time that Ilya speaks, we can see his disbelief. He can't believe what this man is saying. So the Boswachter explains where they found him, on Ilonga Kluwerf, and there's a possibility, but the magistrate wants him and his wife to be in Nesna on Friday to identify the child in court. Elias again is like, you found our child, what are you talking about? And the Boswachter explained they found him with brain mensa, colored people, which is obviously Fila and her family. Ne? Then to Neil Fir, we are back in the Lange Kloof, and this is now where the census manor arrives for the second time to tell Fila that Benjamin needs to go to Nesna. Okay, so this is page 59 to 61. All right, so Fila says that the female and the male ostrich are going to go in together at the same camp today, and just as they go out, this is about here. Um, the, the tall one and the fat one appear on stage again. So that whole first part is just an explanation of everything that's been happening. Um, you know, the basic family, family things, making breakfast, eating breakfast, getting ready for the day's chores and the day's work. So it's not really that important, but it shows a nice family dynamic. And then, like we said, the longer and the fat one um, arrived. The longer then greets, Fila tells the children go and chase in the ostrich. And they go and on, on and they explain. They say, Mr. Goldsberry, the magistrate on Nesna, wants to see the child. Fila says, I have no issue. He can come and look. And then they go on backwards and forwards about, no, the magistrate said you have to go see him. And then she's like, okay, fine. I will take the child there myself. And um, they're like, no, you can't because it's in two days' time. You're going to take too long. All of these things. And finally, they end off. Uh, they they continue to accuse um, Phila later on as well. Uh, this would be in around about page 6164, between there. They accuse Phila um, about saying that the child isn't getting to church and the child isn't um, going to school. And Phila explains how she... And her family has taught Benjamin. We spoke about the issues about why Benjamin couldn't go to normal schools and all of those things like the rest of her children uh, because of the times and so on. Finally, Selin talks some sense into Fila because he consents that this is going to carry on for long. Fila will not give in and allow Benjamin to be taken away. So he finally says, you know what, just they are promising they're going to take care of Benjamin. Just let him go. He will be back by Saturday. So Phila then agrees. Um, the Langa and the fat one goes and says they are picking him up the next day. If he is not ready, they will leave without him and the magistrate can send the constable to come and fetch him. They greet and walk. Phila then prays and says, Lord, what must I do? Benjamin is like mom and Phila says be quiet I haven't stopped uh, I'm, I'm still thinking then everyone goes into the house all depressed and what Phila stays outside and then she thinks of a plan she thought maybe to send Benjamin to a cliff side to hide in one of the caves but she can't do that because first of all there was a they say a tear but it's actually a leopard came through and ate one of the Lagans's sheep which is um, the neighbors of Phila, also colored people, but not as good farmers as Phila is. Um, so she can't do that because he might get killed. And secondly, 
if they arrive there and Benjamin is now all of a sudden gone, do you think they're going to leave it there? No, they're going to search for him and there will be issues. So she says, no, this cannot happen. And then this whole thing about Phila telling everybody to get ready. Benjamin needs to go there and they need to get him shoes and they need to get him a shirt and they need to do this and they need to do that. And everyone is just like, what are you talking about, mother? And finally, everyone starts going. Then uh, Phila gets a bath ready for Benjamin. And as she is bathing him, obviously it sounds a bit weird, 12-year-old boy being bathed by his mother. But the whole idea is the, the, the connection, the spending time with my child to make sure that he is ready, to make sure that he knows what's going on, to make sure that I'm not doing this because I don't love him, because I don't have a choice. So all of that. She asks him questions that the magistrate will probably ask him. Throughout the whole thing, he continuously says, Ma akas bang, and Fila saying, Yach vach di bang. She's not saying it because she's heartless. She's saying it to prepare him because she knows she will not be able to be there to comfort him and protect him when he is in front of the magistrate. And the only way in which she will be able to prepare him is to tell him, don't be scared. Find a way to think about something else other than being scared. But obviously, Phila herself is very scared at this point as well because, I mean, it's her child and he's being taken away by strange people. So all of that, then questions being asked, who's your mother, who's your father, where do you live, all of those things. Um, she says if he lets you write, you write neatly. If he lets you read, you write, you read properly like you always read me the Bible. He won't ask you sums or math questions. And he's like, but I don't know the nine times table anymore. And she's like, he will not ask you and so on and so forth. So typical mother of child way of talking. Then he says again, it's bang. She says again, chase away the bang. Um, and they are co um, carrying on. He asks, what will happen if they don't bring me back? And Phila says, the magistrate will make sure that they bring you back on Saturday. The magistrate word is law. Now give me your foot. She's still busy bathing him. This is interesting to note, especially when we get to the later parts of Act 2. Uh, we'll explain that whole section when we get there. But it's interesting to note that now she says his word is law. But when we look later what Phila says um, about the magistrate, it's quite interesting to note the change. Um, Phila explains to him how she put, packed everything for him. And she also mentions that she has given him um, five shillings to show that they are not poor. Very interesting as well to note. We will get back to the five shillings later. Um, all of this carries on. And then um, in page 66, the last page basically of this act, Benjamin says something quite interesting. Um, he says, Dad, were you in front of the magistrate? Because Tolly says that you were in jail. And we spoke about this in some of the classes. I didn't speak to it about or for everybody because it's really not in the book. So they can't ask you about this. But it's just interesting to note the Lagances that are living next to Phila. Um, Selung and one of them got into an argument. And Selung was still quite young and strong and all of those things. And he lost his temper with this guy and he beat him to death basically. Um, they don't say how it happened in the novel. It just says that because of that, he, he kind of um, lost his temper and hit the guy and the guy fell and he was dead. And because of that, Selin was taken into custody. The road that Phila sp speaks about that nine years ago wasn't there. Um, Selin helped to build that road. Okay. Um, so that is where Selung's issues come in with his health, because obviously he was treated as a slave um, while he was in, in custody. So obviously, um, health-wise, things went a little bit awry for him there. Okay, um, And that's the end of Act 1. All you need to know the basics of Act 1 is we meet our two families, the Van Royens, Blaine Bors, the um, Kumutis play any longer clue of. 
you need to know that in Act 1, Scene 1, Lukas of the Van Royens gets missing, but in Act 1, Scene 2, we know that Fila found a child that was about the same age and of the same race where she lives. Then the census manor arrived and they thought something wasn't lekker here. And they went back to the magistrate and the magistrate said they wanted to see the child and Fila has to get her child ready to go and see the magistrate. Okay, um, all of the notes are on your tablets as well on, on Teams, so please go and look at the notes as well. Make sure you understand what's going on there. Summaries of all of that is there. Unfortunately, it is just in Afrikaans. Um, I do not have the energy or the time to go and translate everything for you. Um, but Google Translate will help you if there's something that you don't understand. Just copy and paste. Okay. Um, then we're going to start with Act 2 now. So well, I'll explain how we're going to do that in that video. But this is just a recap of everything that is important to know.